Today you become man and wife, fulfilling the sunnah as way of life. Today you find serenity, may your life be filled with sincerity. There is no happier day in your life than the virtue of being man and wife. There's joy without any end. Allah's blessing on this day does descend, descend. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. All praise due to Allah, we praise Him, seek His help, and we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. We continue on, inshaAllah, talking about the do's and don'ts of a relationship, and this advice is specifically for the husbands, inshaAllah. Now, uh, we find that many people, especially men, they have this character sometimes which they can't control, which is anger. Anger is a, is a problem that exists with many people. And that's why, subhanAllah, Islam focuses on character. For that reason, our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, لا تغضب. When a man came and asked him for an advice, he said, لا تغضب. He said, he said لا تغضب. لا تغضب. Subhanallah, sub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this person has a problem, which is anger. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't get angry. Now, if you have an information you want to convey to your wife, convey it with gentleness, not by yelling and screaming at her. Even if she wants to accept, she won't accept in the manner that you ha you've actually shown. And I love this hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which he has said. He said, إِذَا غَضَبْتْ فَاسْكُتْ إِذَا غَضَبْتْ فَاسْكُتْ إِذَا غَضَبْتْ فَاسْكُتْ If you become angry, be quiet. If you become angry, be quiet. If you become angry, be quiet. How many people that are out there, they've become angry and they did not listen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and now they're divorced and they are alone. How many people, they did not listen to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they became angry and they've made the wrong decision and they've lost probably a member of the family, a cousin, a relative, a friend because of their anger. Subhanallah. So we need to control our anger. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Al-Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُحِدَّةِ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be haste, be quick. Subhanallah, look, an amazing verse from the Quran. وَسَارِعُوا Be quick. And that's why a Muslim should be quick in three circumstances. When they commit a sin, be quick. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness because you might die at any time. And when you want to bury a deceased, and when you want to pray Jum'ah, be quick. Don't be, don't be hesitant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be hate for forgiveness from Allah. We don't need to go through a priest or through a shaykh or through anyone. When we commit a sin, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ Ask for forgiveness, be hasty of asking forgiveness from Allah, from your Lord. وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The width of paradise is the size of the heavens and the earth. أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared this jannah for those that are pious. And then Allah tells us who they are. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْدَرَّاءِ those who spend at a time of difficulties and at a time of ease. When they are comfortable and when they are uncomfortable, they spend, they give to those who are in need. Subhanallah al-Azim. الَّذِينُ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْدَرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ And those who control their anger. So this paradise that we spoke about, which is the size of the heavens and the earth, okay, the width of it, Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared it for those that control their anger. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those who forgive people. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So those people who implement these things which they give at a time of comfort and at a time of difficulties and those people who control their anger. Subhanallah. My dear respected uh, brothers and sisters, anger sometimes it's good. And sometimes it's inappropriate and it's, it could be haram. You know, when you see sometimes, uh, let us say, uh, a person harming another person, you should be angry at that act. 
Okay, you shouldn't be happy, oh, I don't get angry. And, uh, no, no, you should be angry. You know, when we see our brothers and sisters suffering here and there, we should be angry. Even if we were to see our brothers, let us say Muslims, harming non-Muslims for no reason, we should be also angry. This is a normal anger and that's a normal feeling. And that's part of faith. But we're talking about the anger which is dislike, the anger that when a person loses their temper and they transgress all boundaries. That's the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about. Those who control their anger. He didn't say to stop their anger, control your anger, control yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Wal kadhimeen al ghayd wal aafeen an al nas. And those who forgive, those who pardon people. And allow us to continue on with this beautiful verse from the Quran. Forgive people. You know, we find many people, unfortunately, they, are, you know, they have uh, so much hatred to this person and this person and this person. And that's not appropriate. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sits inside the masjid. And he said, a man will appear from this side of the masjid. He'll be of the abode of paradise. Subhanallah. And a man comes in. And his name is not even mentioned in the hadith. The second day, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anas ibn Malik reports this hadith. He said, Our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, A man will appear from this side of the masjid. He'll be of the abode of paradise. The third day, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the same thing. Ya subhanallah al -azim. So one of the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala an, he wanted to find out, he wanted to investigate What's, what, what is the, the thing that this man is doing so he can attain this high level of faith, high level in paradise? So he came up to me and said, there's a dispute between me and my father. May I stay in your house for three days? He said, yes. So here he is, he's investigating what he's doing. He didn't see him get up at night and pray, night prayer. He didn't see him, you know, he did not see him, you know, doing anything remarkable, acts of worship. He didn't see him do that. So the first day, second day, third day, after the third day, he came up to him and said, you know, uh, I'll be honest with you. There was no dispute between me and my father. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, you'll be of those that you are of those that will be, inshallah, in paradise. And I didn't see you pray, you know, often. And I didn't see you do, you know, remarkable things. So, subhanallah, he said to him, as you have seen, that's the way it is. Then this sahabi walked away. He didn't get any result. So he called him back. He said, I go to bed and I don't have any jealousy, nor hatred, nor animosity upon any person. Beautiful heart. Clean, white heart. Because if you have this sickness, you don't forgive this person and you don't forgive this person. Subhanallah, Allah loves to forgive. Allah loves the good doers. Allah loves the Allah loves those people who forgive. Allah likes those people that control their anger. Allah likes those people that, that give at a time of difficulties and ease. And you say to me, oh, I can't forgive. If I was to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love you to, if you were to do something, wouldn't you do it? You would say to me, yes. I would say, forgive. You'd say, no, I won't forgive. And those people who have this disease and sickness, and wallahi, this is a, a very dangerous disease that people have. And this causes depression, anxiety, bipolar. When a person has this animosity and hatred against this person, I won't speak to this person. I will never forgive this person. This person did this to me five years ago. And this person did... You're carrying all this weight. You are overburdening yourself. Forgive and move on. Move, move on with life. You have been distracted with this disease that you have. Move on. If you have cut ties with anyone, give them a call. Salaamu Alaikum, brother. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yes, subhanallah. You know... Uh, sister calls me once and she said oh, someone is backbiting you, someone is slandering you this and that, I said I don't want to know who it is may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them just move on you know one, one pious person was told that someone is backbiting you you know and he went to him and he gave him some dates, he said well you are giving me your presence which is your good deeds, allow me to give you a present Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak said a beautiful saying, he said in arat an astaghib ahad lastaghib to ummi Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak has said, if I wanted to backbite anyone, I will backbite my mother because she is worthy of my good deeds. Because when a person backbites others, they are giving their deeds to others. 
That's why it's important to forgive and move on. Don't sit in gatherings and backbite. This person has done this and this. Just move on. Be light. Just move on and, and, and you know, smile and, and be, pardon people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love you. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. So it's important, please, to control your anger, especially with the one that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, look after them. Look after them. This is a trust that Allah has given us. Our wives are trusts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So let's look after them. Is that, is that the right way to treat them? To yell at them and scream at them and, and abuse them? And, and that's, that's not the, the way that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us. This is something that we need to keep in mind. Also, the do's and don'ts, don't please dispute in front of the children. If there's an argument or dispute, please do not dispute in front of the children. The children will be psychologically affected. They might, uh, you know, uh, be obsessed of getting married later on. So if there's an argument or dispute, make sure that the kids are asleep. You know, you go to the bedroom and you speak about your problems in a, in a rational manner, in an appropriate manner, which is pleasing to Allah, without yelling and screaming. Also, if there's a, a dispute uh, bet between you and your spouse, please don't go out there and tell your mother. No, my dear respected sister, don't go out there and tell your, your mother. Keep that, keep that relationship, that private relationship between you two. Uh, we'll talk, inshallah, later on uh, about how to resolve these problems by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't allow, don't cut her from her family. Yani, uh, many men, unfortunately, we find that they won't allow their wives to, to, to go to their, to their mother or their father or their brother or sister. Akhi, don't do that to yourself. Yani, would you want that your children see you deprive their mother from, um, from uh, seeing her, uh, her family? The kids later on will grow and, not, and also disconnect with one another. Right? You try your utmost best to, to bring the families together. Don't cut ties. And this is one of the ways to, to um, you know, have the, the closeness with your wife when you respect her parents and you respect her brothers and sisters. This is something that we need to keep in mind. We will take a break, inshallah, and we'll continue with this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. As you walk together hand in hand, Allah has given you a companion and friend. Da, 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 da. As you walk together hand in hand, Allah has given you a companion and a friend. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, our dear viewers. Inshallah, we continue on with the do's and don'ts in regards of the relationship. And this advice, obviously, is to the men as we have advised our women. Quality time, spending quality time. And I'm not talking about you sitting down inside the house for six, seven hours watching football or watching cricket. Okay, and you claim that, oh, I'm spending enough time with the, inside the house. That's not quality time. That's, that's a time that uh, could cause sometimes misery inside the house. Oh, you say to the kids, move away from the television, do this and do that. Quality time, it could be sometimes a minute, it could be sometimes five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. Quality time is a sacred time between you and your spouse. We sit down and you talk about the future of the children. You talk about something which is obviously, which relates to both of you. Uh, you know, when you, when you, as I said, you know, you say good things to her, when you um, acknowledge her, her mashallah, uh, her uh, good deeds and things like this. This is important. Also, um, I recommend that you encourage her. If she wants to go out there and seek uh, Islamic knowledge, you know, she wants to go with other sisters, tabarakallah, and they want to learn the Quran, and they want to learn the Hadith, and you know, all that, and they want to learn how to, to become a, a better wife. This is a good thing, and that's encouraged. Obviously, inshallah, you take her there and you bring her back. Her father takes her there, there, let us say, her brother, whatever. It's, it's important for us uh, to make sure that she seeks education. Now, uh, spare time causes a lot of mischief. And this is, unfortunately, you find the majority of people that, uh, you know, they, they take drugs or they do something which is uh, absurd or something that is uh, wicked. It's because they have a lot of spare time. 
So uh, especially if you guys are newly married, she has a lot of time, you know, try to encourage her to uh, maybe fulfill a course, as I said, in cooking, uh, in, in Islamic knowledge, and things that would benefit her, inshallah, later on. Uh, please um, yani, encourage her. Encourage her, let's do this, let's do that. Uh, as I said previously, maybe if you buy, both can try to memorize certain uh, verses from the Quran, certain chapters uh, from the Quran, certain hadith, this will uh, bring that uh, relationship together. Now, I know there's a lot of pressure out there. And many men, when they come to their house, sometimes they bring their problems to the house. Please don't do that. That causes a, a very, uh, you know, a very difficult, it makes it a very difficult life inside the house. And it becomes a very sad relationship between husband, wife and children. So try to leave your problems outside the house. Don't bring your problems to the house. Don't bring your problems to the house. Try to build your immune, that if there's a, a problem, obviously, and we all know that, you know, when you're working, the, you face difficulties and confrontations and all that type of stuff. Try to leave your problem outside the house. Don't bring it inside the house. Because that headache that you have now, everyone has it. You know, your wife, your children, and it will become uh, an uncomfortable living at that time. Also, try to listen to her opinion. Try to listen to her opinion. Now, yes, there are men that are more intelligent than women, and there are women that are more intelligent than men, and that's normal. But if your wife wants to say something, listen to her opinion. You might not agree with her, but at least listen to her opinion. Okay? And show, and show her that her opinion is important. And sometimes, you know, if you're, if you're a righteous man, you know, you might see that uh, she has uh, the correct opinion and implement, say, may Allah reward you for the advice. Yes, I agree with you. And this happened to even our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, at the time of Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, the treaty that happened at that time, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he was sad. He said, you know, basically the Sahaba uh, are not doing what I've told them when he told them to shave their hair. She said, Ya Rasulullah, go out there and you do it yourself. And that's exactly what he did. He listened to the advice of Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala. He walked out and he did that and they all followed because they were in state of shock at that specific time. So yes, we, we, you know, if, if an advice that comes from the wife and you say, MashaAllah, may Allah reward you for that advice, that advice has helped me immensely, you know, this will build her confidence and w will make her feel good within. As you want to feel good, she needs to feel good. So always, you know, build her confidence, lift her status, say good words to her, MashaAllah, you know, I, I would not know how, how to live without you. You're the best thing that has happened in my life. As I said, you know, there's sometimes comparison uh, between husband and wife. Uh, but, you know, sometimes he has a, a greater knowledge and she doesn't. Okay, and that could be your problem. You might have lived with her for 10, 15, 20 years or whatever, and you have not taught her or you have not given her the ability to go out there and seek education, let us say. So sometimes you're to blame. And subhanAllah, you know, there's one of the Salaf said this, this amazing word. He said, Inni ara athar al he said that I used to see the ill doing that I've committed through the, through the character of my wife. So if your wife has a bad character towards you, maybe you are to blame. Maybe because of the, the sin that you've committed. Subhanallah, amazing saying. So you need to observe yourself and look closely at yourself. And I love the saying of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an which he has said, he said, Hasibu anfusakun qabla an tahasabu. Hold yourself accountable. Look closely at yourself before you'll be held accountable the day of judgment. So before you tell your wife, oh, you know, your character is not good, look at your character. Look at your behavior. Look at, and your, uh, look at your, uh, wal'iyadu billah, wicked act or sinful act. This is something that you need to understand. Also, my dear respected uh, brothers, you know, uh, we need to understand that uh, subhanallah al azim that the relationship between husband and wife is a partnership and if your wife let us say she does not fulfill her part you fulfill her part just imagine you and your wife at the moment running a business or you and your partner in business and your partner your partner does not fulfill his obligation he comes late you know he's very uh, he is very neglectful of the work don't you fulfill your part You'll fulfill your part and even his part because you're fearful that you might lose your wealth and all your money. The same thing in a relationship. 
So if the wife, let us say, you know, she, she's sick or whatever, help her, see what she needs, you know, support her. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a great example. He used to help in, in, in the, the housework. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Aisha radiallahu anha reported, that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to help inside the house. But when the adhan is made, when the adhan is called, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaves everything and he goes and responds to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this is a call from Allah. Hayya ala salah, come to success, come to pray, come to success, hayya ala al-falah. So when, when, when an adhan is made, our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, drops everything and he responds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's call through this mu'adhin. So as I said, it, it is important for us to seek education. And please, education will build a strong bond between husband and wife. If there's a course that is taking place, about marital issues, you know, how to uh, resolve problems, all that. I highly recommend that you involve yourself with this. If you want a life of prosperity, if you want a life of happiness, make sure that you fulfill this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Are they equal those who have knowledge and those who don't have knowledge? Yeah, seek knowledge. And that's why the first word that descended on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is iqra. And the majority of people read things that don't benefit them. They read the sports column, they read things that are uh, insignificant, things that probably harms them. But they don't, things, they don't read things that benefits them. So encourage your wife to read the Quran. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iqra'ul Quran. And please listen to this. All the men and, and the, the women that are out there, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advises us with this beautiful hadith. He said, read the Quran. The Quran will come the day of judgment and it will intercede for you. The Quran would say to Allah, Oh Allah, distance that person away from hell. Oh Allah, bring that person close to Jannah. The Quran would speak. Naam, it will speak. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Take the Quran as a companion, as a friend. Shafi'an li sahibihi. So accompany, especially at a time where it's, it has become very difficult to accompany people. People, you know, they always have problems and, and you know, uh, they put sometimes a burden upon a person. The best companion to have is the Qur'an. Make sure that the Qur'an is with you if you are in a car, you know, if you are inside the house. Make sure that part of your daily routine, your daily program is the Qur'an. Take the Qur'an. Ya yeah, subhanAllah, you know, we have part of our daily program uh, is to basically, you know, watch news. There's nothing wrong with that. Watch newspaper, alhamdulillah, to look after the children, alhamdulillah, to look after the husband, alhamdulillah, to look after the wife. That's great. We have all this program. Great. But let us make sure that part of this program is Al-Quran. Al-Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, listen to this amazing verse from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Inna hadha al-Quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. Indeed, this Qur'an guides to what is superior. So if you want to lift your status, if you want to lift this family, make sure that the Qur'an is part of your life. Make sure that the Qur'an is part of your life. So I beg you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to read the Qur'an. And if your wife, can't, she does not know how to read, encourage her. Make sure that she fulfills the Qur'an. I know that there are many women out there, mashallah, tabarakallah, that they are capable and they, they are teachers to their, to their children and some of them are even teachers to their husbands. Subhanallah al-Azim. So the Qur'an, make sure that it becomes part of your life. It becomes part of your daily program. And that's how you'll have harmony inside that house. So please, you know, do your utmost best to encourage your spouse to say good things, to tell her that you love her, tell her that you honor her, don't speak bad about her, don't speak ill in front of her. And this, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will establish a great bond between husband and wife, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and preserve you all. And I appreciate that you're watching this program. And inshallah, we implement what we hear. That's very, very important because the difference between Muslims and non-Muslims is the Muslims that they would say, Sami'na wa ata'na, we hear and we obey. This is the saying of the Muslims. They hear good and they obey. وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا You know, they say we hear and we obey. Now, we don't want to be of those people that, that would say, Sami'na wa asayna. We hear and we disobey. No, we Muslims, we hear and we obey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you all and preserve you and your family. Aqulu qawli hadha 
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah's blessing on this day does descend, descend As you walk together hand in hand Allah has given you a companion and friend To stand and always be seen As man and wife fulfilling the deen From this day on forever be true Cherish this life that's destined for you Live your life with kindness and care Remember, Allah will always be there, be there The first rule is the letter Ha Ha This letter may be considered as a heavy H and to pronounce Ha correctly you have to The H sound is emitted from the middle part of the throat with some friction Touch the back of the tongue to the back of the throat, and then force air out. This letter is found in the word This letter is represented by an underlined H. The second rule is the letter Rain. This letter may be considered as a G-H and to pronounce Rain. correctly, you have to. This sound is pronounced from the closest part of the throat. The lips are slightly rounded and opened. This letter is found in the word وَاسْتَغْفِرْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ The letter is represented by <laughs> 